One year of COVID and counting. One year of wondering which face mask is best. As we begin our look back at this very difficult time, that's where David Pogue starts us off. Man, I've still got a lot of questions about these masks. I mean, I can still remember when the advice was not to wear one. We don't generally recommend the wearing of masks. And now they say we're supposed to wear two? But which is better, this kind or this kind? N95? KN95? Who's testing these things? And why do they keep changing their minds? So I would argue that it's not changing one's mind. Do Knowledge see? changes. That is actually a fundamental component of science. James Dickerson is the chief scientific officer for Consumer Reports and, by happy coincidence, a nanoscientist. There aren't any standards for testing masks like these, so the magazine doesn't test them, but Dickerson offered me a little mask show and tell. Well, welcome to the Home Shopping Network for masks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this I recognize as a gator. Stay away. My advice, Consumer Reports advice, stay away from them. What about these cloth masks? So many cloth masks are okay. More layers, more protection, both for you and for others. Some of them I've seen have these little exhaust fan things, exhaust yeah. filters. It's a bad idea because most of the vents do not filter the air coming out from your breath directly to the outside. Oh breath. man. <laughs> Those are not protected for others. Now, here we come to the paper surgical masks. Yep. They're perfectly fine. In fact, they're really good to use in combination with other masks. For example, you can use a surgical mask with a cloth mask. Now, we've all heard about these N95 masks. So the 95 is 95% 95 of airborne particles are captured by the mask. These are also N95? It looks totally different from these bra so, cups. So that one is a KN95. KN95 is based on a Chinese standard. The standards are very similar to each other. As it turns out, you can test your own mask with your phone's flashlight. If you see light between the threads, that's not much protection. Oh my gosh, I could Yeah, it's, I could it's count it. the threads. Let's try one of these puppies. See, in this case, you don't see any specific dots of light. You see the glow of the fabric. Okay. So that's more protective. So in 2019, we were making about 22 million N95s here in the United States a month. We are now in the U.S. making more than 95 million a month. Nikki Vars McCullough is an engineering manager at 3M. That's right, 3M, maker of post-it notes and scotch tape, also happens to be the nation's largest producer of N95 masks. Well, actually, I shouldn't say masks. I think of these as two different kinds of masks, but you, you, you kind of wince when I say that, don't you? <laughs> I do because they are really different. The one with the ear loops there that you're holding, yep, that is a face covering. So if any particles come out, if you're coughing or sneezing or you're talking and it's kind of spitty, it'll catch it. I noticed that you're not saying very much about them protecting me from incoming virus. When you put something on that has any gaps, any gaps around the edges, the air and the particles are just gonna take the path of least resistance. Now this, on the other hand, you, you don't call this a mask. No, that is a respirator. A respirator is designed to a specific government standard to help reduce the particles that you breathe into your nose, mouth, and lung. This is two-way? This stops incoming and outgoing? That is correct. And I wouldn't say stop, it filters. It sounds like fit is a big deal. <laughs> in the fit is a very important detail. This hair is 20 microns in diameter, and we're talking about particles that are half a micron. I want to welcome you to the Global Fit Test Laboratory. McCullough took me to the 3M Human Fit Labs to cut open an N95. On the outside, we always have a layer that's protective, and then you start to get into the, the filter media, the layers that actually do the filtering. The virus particles don't just get physically blocked. They're also attracted to the fibers, thanks to a tiny electrical charge. 3M tests its N95 models in this special chamber. Looks good. At this performance, the role of test subject will be played by me. If I'm not back in four hours, call the police. The air in there is flooded with microscopic particles of harmless salt, 
a tube near my face measures how much salty air is leaking in. Begin bending at your waist. Begin grimacing for 15 seconds. You're supposed to move around in ways that might dislodge the N95. Begin turning your head side to side. I feel salty and invigorated. We watched you, you did a great grimace. See, but when this graph spikes, something went wrong. Oh yeah, so here's where the mask slipped off my nose. Yeah, but at the tail, it was back to fitting really well. A couple more things about these N95s. First of all, officially, you're still not supposed to buy them because medical workers still can't get enough. Second, beware of counterfeits. The CDC says that most authentic N95s have the word NIOSH stamped right on the outside, meaning that it's been certified by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. Oh, and read the reviews before you buy. I'm aware that the science is evolving. Is there anything concrete and for sure you can send us off into the sunset information you don't think will be changing? Wearing a mask is better than not wearing a mask at this stage. Wear as dense of a mask as you feel comfortable. So wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask.